Okay, it's one o'clock. We get started, Francesca. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you for coming. Um, this uh, my name is Louisa Lee. I'm the moderator for this session. This presentation is UX demo and a brief orientation for usability testing observers. Um, Francesca Sovalik from New York University is the presenter, and. Uh, um, let me introduce her. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to give you the second poll. All right, so just in a second. All right, so that's the second poll. Uh, Francesca is a senior e-learning specialist at New York University. In her role, she supports the university on a variety of teaching and learning IT services, meeting the needs of over 50,000 faculty and students. In addition to providing instructional technology support, she also works as the UX researcher on various projects. Um, so we have the poll results coming in. Most of the people have attended uh, UX sessions, some of the UX sessions in the morning, and only one third of people say no. So we have a pretty good crowd. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, so Francesca, I'm going to make you the presenter, and you are going to share the screen, all right? Absolutely. Okay, we get us started. Okay, your turn. Okay, great. So can everyone, Louisa, can you see my screen? Um, it suddenly disappeared. I saw it before. Maybe you know. have multiple screens? Yes, it came back. Okay, great. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me today. Uh, so my name is Francesca Zoklik, and I work at New York University within Academic Technology Services. Uh, and so I, I rebranded the name of the title of the session for today, so what to expect when you're expecting testers. Uh, or we could stick with a demo and brief orientation for usability testing observers. And so the objective for today, so in our 45 minutes, um, is to spend a little time on explaining what remote usability testing is. Uh, if you will be joining us for any of our sessions between 2 and 4 o'clock today, we're actually going to be facilitating four live remote usability sessions. Uh, so this, the intention of this session is to help prep some of our observers, so thank you very much if you're out there. Uh, and if you're not, if you haven't signed up to review one of our sessions later on, uh, no need. I, I think something that you can get out of this session is possibly how to facilitate uh, some testing at your own institution if you are interested. Uh, secondly, we'll be spending some time talking about the role of the observer and what their job is uh, throughout a usability session. It's actually quite important to have mindful and, and thoughtful observers uh, as well as the, the participant. Uh, and then I'll be showing you a video example of the process. It's a very quick video just showing you how the session is typically set up, uh, being that it's remote. And then finally, I'll take some questions if anyone has any. All right, so what exactly is remote usability testing? Uh, well, it's just like usability testing, only it is remote. Uh, one of the benefits of having a session be, being conducted remotely is that you're able to interact with participants from uh, uh, various environments uh, across different browsers, different connectivity, uh, and it also offers a unique way to get to know your clients uh, in, a, in a different way than if you had them come into a lab uh, to run a session. I, I've done usability sessions both ways, both having folks come into a lab-like environment as well as conducting remote testing. Um, and I tend to enjoy rem remote testing a little bit more uh, just because you're able to interact with folks in a different way. They're, they're usually more in their own comfort zone rather than having them come in to visit you in a lab, uh, which may seem like a weird experience for some participants. Um, and what it also allows you to do is to have as many observers as you like watching you. 
so in the sessions today, I think we have about three or four observers watching, you know, remotely from wherever you are. Uh, so it allows folks to participate, you know, in the comfort of wherever they are. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about the level of interactivity that happens even though you are, you are still remote. Uh, at NYU, we did a series of remote testing for our usability studies. I would say uh, we've probably conducted along the lines of about 30 to 50 remote usability sessions along with my colleague Mark Riley, uh, who presented earlier today on UX testing and Morpheus. That took place at 11 o'clock this morning. And so let's talk a little bit about what remote usability testing is, or just usability testing in general. So it's not this. So I'm not sure if everyone gets the reference. Uh, this is a clip from Seinfeld uh, where George's father is talking about Festivus, which is a made-up holiday that happens around Christmas. And the idea behind Festivus is that you get all the people in a room that pissed you off throughout the year, and you just kind of have at it. So it's your venting session. It's your session to get everything that you're upset with off of your chest. Um, and that's not what usability testing is at all. Uh, so the, the purpose of this slide and this image is to just really emphasize that usability testing is not about running a focus group. Uh, it's not about analyzing data from, from a survey. Uh, it's not about getting as many people as you can in a room and talking about their feelings. Uh, what you really want to focus on with usability usability testing is understanding someone's behavior rather than their preference. And the way that you do that is watching people carry out a task. And so this is a little bit, this is a better image to kind of display the essence of what usability testing is. So here we have a person engaging in a task on a device. So they're going through some sort of task, maybe she's checking her email, maybe she's checking into Yelp, I don't know, she looks like kind of a sassy grandma. Um, but that's really the true nature of understanding or really defining what user experience is. So it's about this relationship, this experience that I have with a piece of media or I have with a, a computer application or just with technology in general. And the way that you tie that into usability testing is that you make it a standard experience across participants. So while as a facilitator I may be having this one-to-one -one interaction, um, it's consistent, it's standardized. Uh, I'm saying the same things over and over again. I'm asking the same questions over and over again. And that's what really adds the testing element to it. And so going back to the Seinfeld Festivus reference where George's father was getting as many people in a room as he could as possible to understand or to, you know, express himself, um, with usability testing you actually don't need that many people. Um, the research shows that uh, about three to six people um, after you meet with them and, and run a usability test in a standardized way, uh, the same patterns and the same behaviors will start emerging. Uh, I think that's because, you know, at some common denominator, we're all people and, and we may all have common themes in, in how we behave and in how we act. Um, but just, just to note here, uh, you want to keep this limited to set tasks that you're repeatedly asking people. Uh, so a lot of times when we are designing a session, uh, so for example, when we were testing out our instance of Sakai, uh, we, we outlined perhaps about eight or nine tools that we were really interested in and we chunked them out into maybe just pairing up two tools together and we would create short scenarios uh, just based on those two tools and we would repeat that test uh, about three to six times and then move on to the, to the next small chunk. And again, here's some of the research. So this, is, this was put out um, about, about ten years ago. Uh, by Jacob Nielsen, who, who's one of the forefronts of founding, uh, you know, modern usability testing practices. And, and the data here shows that as you increase the number of test users, at some point you're going to plateau in terms of finding out new problems. Um, so the two stars that I added to the graph kind of shows that 
once you hit the three to six participant range, um, you're going to find the majority. So about 50% of the major issues uh, you will find within talking to the first three to six people. And the thing with usability testing, uh, it, it's meant to be an iterative process. It's not meant to be one of this one and done. Um, as, as a practitioner, I always recommend to start uh, usability practices throughout, so from product conception all the way out to product deployment. Uh, sometimes folks think that they could do usability testing at the end to validate their product. Uh, you really don't want to go that way. You really want to get your users involved from from the very beginning, from either um, making you know wireframes or or prototypes uh, all the way to the end of deployment. All right, so being an observer and how to participate. So this is helpful information, again, either if you will be participating in our sessions coming up beginning at 2 o'clock, um, or if you're interested in running this at your own institution, uh, I'll be going into some detail as to what actually happens from the observer perspective. Uh, so for the observer, you just pretty much you have three main goals. You're going to watch. You're going to listen and you're going to write. And writing is probably the most important task uh, that you can contribute to the usability testing process as an observer. And so what you write or what you have to write. Uh, so at New York University, uh, we came up with a process on how to best, uh, I guess you would say, you know, systematically evaluate all of our participants. And so what you see here, uh, it's a Google spreadsheet. Um, and on the left side are all of the tasks. So these are the consistent questions that we're asking all of our observers. So before when I said that usability testing, it's a systematic approach. It's very scientific in nature. Um, we're asking the same questions the same way to multiple people to reduce on any sort of error, you know, think of it as a, a science experiment, right? You want to you want to guarantee a consistent environment each time. Uh, so all of the questions that we ask are on the left. And then uh, within this sheet, uh, we ran this testing series through three participants. So in columns B, C, and D, uh, you'll see P1 says participant 1, participant 2, participant 3. And then all of the observers actually have their own sheet similar to this. So if you look down towards the bottom, I guess I'll move my mouse around, um, you'll see that Simon sheet, that's a, a generic observation sheet. Uh, we encourage all of our observers to add their own notes based on the participant uh, so they can add text-based notes. They can also use a color coding system that we come up with. So one being a uh, participant was able to successfully complete the task, five being, you know, participant had total failure, was not able to uh, complete this task. Uh, and then we compile all the data together from our various participants into a master sheet. And it offers a really neat way to get a high level overview of where your problem areas are and, and what you should focus on if you have some time and, and resources to, to do development work uh, versus what your problem areas are not. Uh, so we can see right here in row nine, um, everyone was able to figure out how to change their time zone. Uh, but in row eight, when we asked folks how they would search for users within Sakai, uh, they kind of failed on that part. And you could also use this tactic for if you're doing in-person usability testing. Uh, we just find it helpful for remote because, you know, it's, we're using Google Docs, everything's online. Uh, so it's another medium for folks to feel connected to each other, even though we're in different spaces. Okay, so this is just a quick little screenshot for those of you that will be joining us today if you want to be an observer. Um, also, if you haven't signed up yet and you are intrigued now because you're watching this awesome presentation, um, I definitely encourage you to sign up to be an observer. Uh, you'll find links to the note sheet within the lesson subpage for the various sessions. Uh, those of you that have signed up already, you're going to find a tab 
uh, in that spreadsheet that has your name on it. Uh, but if you are feeling ambitious and you just want to sign up to observe, uh, just grab a sheet that doesn't have a tab in it. There's some empty ones in there. And this, this slide kind of explains the relationship between the participant and the facilitator uh, during a remote session. So I guess the, the gray wall in the middle represents uh, go to meeting, uh, and I'll get into that a little bit. So all of our sessions, all of our remote sessions at NYU uh, were facilitated using go to meeting. Um, and it's a nice way to interact with participants. We're able to swap. Uh, screens very easily and again you'll see all of that if, if you participate with us later on. Um, but it, it also is a nice medium just to really emphasize that there are just two people in the room so even though they're, they're remote it's just really a relationship between the participant and the facilitator. Uh, but the observers are there uh, so what we often encourage is for our observers to not only take notes um, but if they do have some questions, to actually field those through the facilitator rather than talking directly with the participant. Okay, so next I'm going to show everyone an example of how a test uh, is set up. Uh, so in this video example, you'll see everything is being facilitated through GoToMeeting, uh, and the only interaction is between the participant and the facilitator. Uh, but if you look pretty closely in the video, uh, focusing on the GoToMeeting uh, chat area, you will see a few observers in there. All right, so now I'm going to drag a video. And hopefully, everyone will be able to hear it. Oops. Hi, Marcel. Hi there. Hi, how are you? This is Francesca. Hi, Francesca. Hi, thank you so much for taking the time to help me today. Well, glad to do it. Okay. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, what we'll be doing today. Uh, so basically I'm going to be getting your feedback on NYU Classes, which is the new learning management system that we're looking to implement at NYU. Um, and your job is going to be really easy. Um, all I need you to do is just be yourself. Um, now and again, I may ask you what you're thinking or to ask you to think out loud. Um, but mostly I just want you to show me how you would use the system. Um, and I just want to emphasize that we're looking to test the environment, not you. So there's no right or wrong answers in any of the questions that I'll be asking you. So, the first thing that I'd like to do is to give you presentation control. And what that means is that through GoToMeeting, I'll be able to see your desktop and your web browser so I could follow along with you. So, if you would like to close anything that you don't want me to see, so if you have your email open or if you have um, a chat client open, um, Feel free to take a couple of moments just to shut those things off and then let me know when you're ready. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. So, let's see. Okay, so you should see a window pop up soon. Um, just accept um, whatever it says and then I'll be able to see your desktop. Okay. Great. Okay. So, so again, that was just a quick overview of how the initial setup happens of a remote usability session. So, both the participant and I are logged in to go to meeting. Uh, as the facilitator, I initiate the event. Uh, I run through a standard introductory welcome note, uh, letting folks know. You know, this will happen online, uh, and then just reiterating that I'll be, be able to view their desktop, so if they need to close anything, 
uh, also letting them know that we're looking to test the system, not you. So there's no right or wrong answers. Uh, we're just really curious to see your actions and, and see how you interact with the system. Uh, and then after that, that introduction, uh, giving presentation control over to the participant and then just walking them through a series of set tasks uh, and, and taking note on, on their interactions with those tasks. Uh, so that's, that's it in terms of a formal presentation on my part. Uh, so we talked about what is remote usability testing, uh, the role of an observer, and just really how important that, that role is, um, and the ways that an observer participates. Uh, so if anyone has any questions uh, that they'd like to ask, uh, feel free to uh, you know, type them in. Uh, we're also a small group, so I'm totally comfortable with just unmuting everyone um, and, and having more of a conversation if folks are interested in that. Um, if you want to ask a question, you can also type in the question area in the control mm -hmm. panel. Yep. Yeah, we will be getting questions from there. Oh, okay. Um, Francesca, did you unmute everybody? Uh, no, let me do that now. Okay. Right. Is there any questions? Uh, Francesca, I think I have a question. Uh, for those online testings, how long is usually uh, one test? Oh, Francesca, did you hear my question? Hello? Did I mute myself? No. All right. Um, my question is uh, how long... Hello? Oh, I think I was... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so my question is how long is usually a test? Yeah, so typically a test lasts for about 45 minutes. Um, Usually after that point, the participant may get, you know, tired a little bit, uh, and, and we try to keep that time either if we're running a remote session or a session that's in person. Um, for the sessions that we're going to be running today, uh, we wanted to, to get in as many people as possible, so we're actually running 20-minute sessions. So they're a little bit shorter uh, than, than we would typically have. All right, gotcha. Um, we've got a question coming in. The participants go through task scenarios, or the facilitator ask questions during a session. Say that again. The, the participants go through. Yeah. Do the participants go through task scenarios, or the facilitator ask questions during a session? Ah, okay. That's a good question. Let me go back to the screen here. Uh, where we're looking at the observation sheet. And so everything in column A, these are all the task questions that are actually asked by the facilitator. Um, and actually what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to jump over to give you guys a preview of what we're going to facilitate later on today. 
Uh, so this is our, our script. Uh, so for the sessions that we're going to be starting at 2 o'clock, as a team, we decided to focus on the My Workspace area within, NY, uh, within Sakai. Um, so this is the general introduction. So, hi, name. My name is Name. Uh, thank you for helping us out today. We're going to gather your feedback. Uh, we have some account information. So what we've done is uh, Wilma helped us set up an environment on Longsite's QA server because we wanted a really vanilla instance of Sakai uh, because we know, you know each, each institution makes their own customizations and whatnot. Um, and we have pre-populated several core sites with dummy content. Uh, and then we've also created fake accounts that correspond with that content. Uh, so here we have a faculty persona, um, and we've enrolled them in a few sites. And then scrolling down a little bit, uh, these are the questions that we'll be asking the person. Uh, so from experience, uh, I would recommend that before you start a session, uh, sort of frame the questions that you want to ask through the lens of the story. Uh, it really helps the participant get into the mindset and really think through the questions. It helps them to think out loud a little bit more so that you're able to understand what their thought processes are. Uh, so we have two scenarios that we worked out. We want someone to imagine that they're an instructor and then someone to imagine that they're a student. Uh, and when you're crafting the questions, you want to be really careful with the language. Uh, so you don't want to say things like, uh, you know, you want to send a message, can you show me where the messages tool is? Or, you know, you want to make an announcement, can you show me, you know, can you upload a new announcement? Uh, you really want to understand the behavior or the motivation behind it. Uh, so, you, so you want to be a little bit more generic. So for example, here we're asking the person, uh, now you realize that your students from your course were supposed to post to their forum by midnight. How would you determine that they did their homework? So it's a little bit more open-ended, and it, it adds another layer of, of understanding uh, for you as a facilitator, because you're able to uh, maybe internalize a little bit what folks think of as the tool that does homework or, you know, how people are determining deadlines within the system. You know, what tools are they looking at to carry out those tasks? Um, writing the script is probably the hardest part when you're coming up with a test because you have to think of creative ways to uh, ask people questions where you're not saying directly, go here, click here, go there, click there. Okay, that's great. Uh, we mm -hmm. have a great question coming. Uh, Mark asks, what are we going to discuss at 4 p.m. today? Should all the observers and facilitators be there? Uh, great question, Mark. Yeah, so at 4 o'clock today, uh, we're having a discussion of the results from UX testing, uh, where we will be reviewing all four participants and their data. Uh, and we'll actually be going through the observation sheets at that time. So this is an example of an observation sheet that's fully filled out. Uh, this was actually the screenshot that I had in my presentation. Uh, and, and hopefully, you know, all of the notes will be filled in by our fabulous observers. Uh, and we'll be able to identify uh, some key takeaways and some commonalities uh, between all of the four participants. Okay, Morgan missed a part. Um, so how do you usually get people involved in a testing session? Is there a day of the week or time to have a session to attract the participants? Yeah, so that, that's a very good question. Um, there's a, I wish there was a magic day, like if every Tuesday at 2 o'clock people just felt the itch to do usability tests. I don't know if there is a magic day and time. Um, but if you give people stuff, they're more likely to come. So we found uh, that it helped us greatly to offer either a gift card or some sort of compensation for their time. Um, when we released Sakai at NYU, it was really easy to recruit participants because no one had seen the system yet, so we were branding it as a way to get a sneak peek. Um, once Sakai came out at our institution, uh, it got a little bit more difficult 
to get folks to come in. Uh, yeah, and Mark just reminded me, yeah, Friday mornings are definitely a good time, usually towards the end of the week, uh, or at your institution if you have common study hours or, or prep hours, um, I would also recommend that time. Okay, that's great. We have uh, around 10 or 15 minutes for more questions. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, Francesca, can people still uh, sign up as observers? Yeah, absolutely. I believe if you log into, um, let me go there, try Sakai, and I'll log in. And on the virtual conference site, uh, if you go to session info and links, uh, starting at around 2 o'clock, uh, you should see, uh, you know, these usability session one, usability session two, and the information is right there along with access to the note sheet. Okay. Okay, we got one question from Charlene. Do you do any type of statistical analysis? Yes, that, that's a very good question. Uh, so typically, uh, when you're collecting usability data, uh, you're getting qualitative data, right? You're not getting quantitative data, so it's not like I, I administered a survey with set multiple choice questions. Uh, when, you're, when you're doing usability testing, it's more about how do I rank someone's reaction to something or how do I, how do I quantify, you know, someone's behavior. Uh, uh, so one way to help with that process is definitely by having this observation sheet where you can sort of give a, a range to help define um, how someone did in something. Um, but in terms of an analysis, I wouldn't say it, I wouldn't classify it as a statistical analysis, but what we often do is a heuristic analysis. Um, so a heuristic, uh, it's, it's a scale uh, that you could utilize which helps to interpret uh, someone's uh, interaction with a piece of technology. Um, and there are often open-ended questions. So how valuable is this platform perceived? How usable is the platform being as perceived? Um, how, how important or how delightful? Uh, so you, as you're going through the data uh, in this way, uh, asking yourself those questions and just plotting them on a chart, um, is another great way to analyze the data. Uh, so I definitely recommend, if you are interested, if you have done testing before and you kind of don't know how to analyze the data, um, I definitely recommend doing a heuristic analysis uh, and asking yourself some of those open-ended questions because it will help you see the results in a different way. Uh, Francesca, can you show the, uh, the color-coded 1 to 5 what they refer to? I think you have a legend somewhere yeah. on the sheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one is having no problem. Uh, two is that the participant had some effort in carrying out the task. Uh, three mean, means that they, you know, exerted some amount of energy uh, to get the task done. It wasn't that easy. Uh, and then four or five is where the person's getting frustrated. So five being a complete failure that they were not able to carry out the task as you asked. Uh, and four, that's kind of where folks are getting frustrated and maybe they, they're asking you for help. Uh, that's another important thing to remember when you are facilitating a test. Uh, you really have to stay true to the script. If the person is asking you for help, uh, you really shouldn't offer help and sometimes it puts you in a weird situation, uh, but often asking the person an open-ended question back or just uh, telling them what they just asked you helps them out a little bit. So for example, if someone said, you know, I don't know where to make this announcement, my reply may be, uh, you know, well, if you were using another computer system, where do you think announcements would happen? You know where does that place make sense to you? Um, and if there's a, a back and forth like that a little bit, I usually just 
you know, say, okay, good job, or let's just go on to the next question, because uh, you don't want them to fail out of the entire session. You don't want them to feel completely frustrated and, and not want to continue on anymore. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's very important for the observers to take notes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, any other questions? Um, Frank, Jessica, could you talk a little bit about today's uh, testing? Uh, are they just uh, fake testings, or do you actually use that test results, or what's your plan? Oh, that's, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, so I think those of us in the group uh, working with Wilma, uh, we wanted to pick a spot within Sakai uh, that maybe doesn't get too much love as the other tools, and that's what made us uh, pick my workspace. I think all of us, uh, depending on your background, maybe some of you are support, support specialists at your institution or your developers at your institution, uh, but I think there's a larger emphasis to, you know, enhance existing tools or functionalities, uh, and my workspace sort of gets forgotten about a little bit. Uh, but I think that there's a lot of potential in reimagining how that space can be utilized uh, within Sakai. Uh, and so that's why the group uh, decided to investigate that area for the conference. Um, I would love if, you know, if there were developers that were watching after seeing our sessions, if they got inspired at all and, and thought about a way to redesign, uh, you know, my workspace. Uh, to have it be more usable, be more purposeful uh, within the system. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, if there's an observer that's watching this that, that has that sort of time and talent uh, would be able to use our, our information today and use it as a springboard. Um, within our institution at NYU, we would often invite some of the key stakeholders uh, to these sessions um, to, to let them see people using the system, and there's nothing more uh, powerful than watching someone fail at doing something that seems really easy. Uh, and that could be a huge motivating factor to get the, uh, you know, to, to get the participation that you may need uh, to make changes in the system. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I hope we get some good results today. I yeah, hope, I mean, yeah. Hopefully we can apply those uh, results or solutions at least locally. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Um, is there any more questions from the audience? Okay. I need to check the question here. Okay. So. Uh, we got this question, Charlene uh, wants to participate in a testing session, but she doesn't see a link. Mm, okay, I, I can check the, uh, the settings on the conference site, and then I'll, I'll get back to her. Yeah, Charlene, which testing session do you want to participate? Uh, there are four. Uh, just on the side note, we definitely need someone for session two and session four. Okay, she says three. Okay. I can do that. Uh-huh. Thank you, Charlene. Yep, yeah, thank you. Um, I have a question for the audience. So for folks that uh, answered the quiz and answered 58%, uh, I have done some work with UX testing. Um, I'm curious to know if your testing process uh, is similar or, or different to what I, I just walked through. 
if anyone want to talk or you are muted, I can unmute you. Yes, you can. If you raise your hand, I can see your sign, and you can talk. Oh, someone. Sorry. Yeah. Is someone talking? I I don't hear anything. Let me see if there. Yeah. So in the question section, the Morgan said it's similar Sakai testing. Okay. Interesting. Um, Morgan, can I ask which tool or what part of Sakai did you guys test it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, we have a couple of more minutes here. Yeah, I'm not sure if Morgan has audio here. I think he has. Uh -huh. I think he tried to talk. Yeah. Oh, they are working on gray book. Oh, cool. nice. Wow, Very this cool. is cool. Very cool. Uh, is that the gray book or the gray book too? Not the two. That's interesting. Uh, there's actually a session, I believe, going on right now um, that is an overview of a gradebook initiative through the Sakai community. Uh, I'm sure the session is being recorded, but you may want to check that out, Morgan, uh, to see what other folks are doing uh, in terms of reimagining how the gradebook can work. Yeah. This is a very exciting. A lot of people are doing more UX work. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay. Um, it, it, oh, a work in that session. Oh, that's you guys. You know about it. Okay, great. Uh, are there more questions? Uh, we are coming to an end of this session. Mm -hmm. Um. Francesca, do you have an um, ending remark or some sort? Uh, no, just thank you very much for the time, and, and I hope that uh, most of you will be able to join us uh, between 2 and 4 o'clock uh, as we facilitate the sessions. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen because it's all live, uh, so some, some level of unpredictability, uh, maybe some level of entertainment, um, but yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Um, and I will see you soon in the testing sessions. Thank you. Thank you.